Jack Dodson. Aaron Kinsley. Charlie Lansbaum. In three, two, one. Hi, I'm Aaron Kinsley. This is Jack Dodson and Charlie Lansbaum. And today we will be hosting the pregame show for the game one of the World Series with the Dodgers and the Astros playing each other. Uh, the pitching matchup tonight is going to be the Dodgers, Kershaw, and the Astros, Keuchel, as the two aces face off in game one of the World Series. Uh, Jack, what do you think about this? Um, I think it's going to be a great series. Well, the Dodgers are very experienced. Uh, the Astros are rallying around Hurricane Harvey, and they're just using that to push themselves forward. Uh, it's going to be a great matchup. Uh, Charlie, what do you think, uh, what do you think uh, is going to take this matchup and why? Um, that's kind of a hard choice for me, but uh, it's very tough, so I don't really know. Yeah. Uh, Jack, who do you think is going to take this matchup? Um, I think it's going to be the Dodgers because even though rallying around something can put you far and just put you to the limit, the Dodgers are much more experienced and I think they just have what it takes. I have to agree with you. I mean, Kershaw is a great pitcher. He has been shaky in the playoffs, although this year he's really been rallying. Or he, this is his best postseason by far, and the Dodgers have great hit-ups up and down the lineup. Now, uh, George Springer, he's been one of the most dominant players for the Astros, especially in the playoffs, um, with the Dodgers having more of an overall lineup, like all around great. Uh, what do you think is going to happen for lineups today, like more hitting, or are we going to see Keuchel and Kershaw dominate? Jack? Um, I think it's going to be the pitchers because um, – they're so talented, and even though each team has great hitters, I'm just, it'll take them a few games to figure out how to get past. Charlie? I think it's the pitchers, and also I think it's George Springer. I think he's going to hit a home run. Mm, George Springer home run. Well, it surely happened more than a few times, and now on to the game. We'll see you at halftime. We don't have half to, uh. Adam Krasilovsky. Jake Spall. Ryan Vindiola. In three, two, one. One. Hi, my name is Jake Spall, and to my right, I'm Kozlowski, and to my left, Ryan Vindiola. And today, this is the pregame of tonight's Dodger game. So, tonight's pitching is for Dodgers is Clayton Kershaw, and for the um, um, and for the A's, Mike Fires. Adam, who do you think will win tonight's game? Well, the A's just got Fires in a trade with the Detroit Tigers, and they've made some pretty good trades also, just getting Julius Familia from the Mets, and they didn't have to give up too much for them. So I think this is going to be a really big pitcher's duel, but I have the A's coming out on top. All right, Ryan? Okay, um, after a heartbreaking loss to Astros in a game one win versus the A's, I think it's going to be the Dodgers. A little better pitching. And even though the A's before um, yesterday's game, they did win six in a row, I think it will be the Dodgers coming out on top, but barely. So that's what you heard from, from, from my friends here. So we'll see you at the end of the game. Alex Swift and Max Baker. In three, two, one. I'm Alex Swift outside the stadium where tonight we have Super Bowl 53 where the Patriots will be facing against the Rams. Let's go for the first question that we have to ask, who do you think will win? Well, I think it's going to be a pretty good game because both teams crush their opponents in the playoffs. And the Rams are coming off their best record ever in the regular season. So I have to say I got to go with the Rams for this one. I actually think that the Patriots will win, even if they have an easier schedule. They still went 15-1, and one, only losing to, well, their tonight's opponent, the Rams. Who do you think will be a key player for each team tonight? Well, for the Rams, I'd have to go with Jared Goff. He's in his first Super Bowl. This is probably the biggest game of his life. He has to be phenomenal tonight if he wants to win the Super Bowl. And for the Patriots, I'd say they have to go with uh, James White, probably, who was phenomenal in Super Bowl 51 and Super Bowl 52. So I think he's going to be a big factor tonight. 
I'm going with, I guess, sort of the opposite of your predictions, Todd Gurley and Tom Brady for each team. And to end it, what do you think will be the final score? I think that it can be a 28-21, 35-28, maybe even within a field goal. Yeah, I definitely think it's going to be pre a pretty close game. Maybe, I don't think it's going to be that high scoring. Maybe like 21 to 18 or something like that. Alex Swift signing off from outside the Super Bowl stadium. I'm Sam Fermanac. I'm Masai Johnson. And Gito Kanyas. In three, two, one. Hi, coming to you live from ABC, and we're going to talk about how LeBron has gone through the NBA. This is his eighth, eighth NBA Finals, and we're going to talk about how this is the fourth time between the Warriors and the Cavaliers, and how do you feel about this matchup going again and again? Well, it's, it's getting a little old, but it's going to be nice because LeBron now has a chance to redeem himself. We'll see how he can do it. He just played a really amazing series with the Celtics where it went down to the wire to game seven and LeBron clutched it out. So I think maybe he can ride that momentum into game one and potentially snag up game one. And the Warriors, do you have good chances on anything about the Cavs at least winning one game this series? Yeah, well, I think if the Cavs are going to want to win a game in this series, it's going to be stopping Kevin Durant. We saw it last year in last year's final. I mean, Kevin Durant was the reason why the Warriors won. Of course, he got finals MVP. I think he's just dangerous with long range, and it's, he's so hard to guard. So I think if they want to win, they're going to have to block, they're going to have to guard him, shut him down. So I'm going to say no. I don't think the Cavs stand a chance on even winning one game. Right. And another question is, um, if LeBron at least wins, like wins the NBA Finals this year, what does do you guys have him like as a like the greatest player of all time? Yeah, I think he's definitely the greatest player, especially with the team he has right now. You're looking at with George Hill, like a, nobody. No, mm -hmm. He's literally carried this team through the playoffs, through the NBA season. This would be like an eighth team or like a 16th team in their conference. So I think, yeah, I think if he beats this Warriors team, who is a super team, yeah, they definitely he definitely deserves the title of the greatest player of all time. And what do you feel about LeBron's chances of staying or leaving this year at Cleveland? Well, I think I think if he wins, he's definitely gonna stay. But I, the more likely situation is they're gonna lose, and he's probably gonna leave Cleveland. Like he, he's been carrying that team. I think personally, he'll go to LA. His son, his sons are already enrolled there. He has a place there. So I think if 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 they lose, which they probably will, I'm betting on that he'll move out to LA. Okay, that is all from ABC. Coming to you back now to the game. My name is Brad Dockman with ESPN. I'm Eli Pearl. I'm Noah Goldsmith. In three, two, one. Hi, I'm Eli Pearl alongside Noah Goldsmith and Brad Packman outside Los Angeles Coliseum where the Rams are playing the Eagles in the NFC Championship game. Lots of storylines coming into this game. Lots of big things can happen. Brad, oh, yeah. um, Brad, today today might be uh, today might be a, a matchup between the top two MVP vote getters for the NFC uh, or for the NFL, Carson Wentz and Todd Gurley. Who do you think is going to win that award? I think Todd Gurley is going to win it with 2,000 yards, including all-purpose yards. Um, 2,000 all-purpose yards. He was really taking the NFL by storm, and he's done it honestly with the help of this Rams offensive line that's been cruising past. Um, defensive lines. I think the Rams are going to take this game, and I think t I think the winner of this game will determine um, the MVP. The Rams are going to win it, and they're going to go to the Super Bowl. No, what do you think about that? I mean, for the MVP voting, I think that the award is most valuable player. And while Todd Gurley might be the best player in the league, he isn't the most valuable. Obviously, a running back is one of the key positions, but a quarterback just makes or breaks the team. You see, the good teams in the league have great quarterbacks. The bad teams don't have good quarterbacks, so I think Carson Wentz will win MVP. Interesting take. You have a rebuttal of that? Oh, yeah. You can see the Jacksonville Jaguars, who are now going to the Super Bowl. The winner of this game will play the Jaguars. I don't think Blake, and Blake, is Bar the back for Blake Bartles didn't make the play um, Pro Bowl this year. How does that I mean, I don't think that Blake Bortles is a terrible quarterback compared to really bad teams who could even have a good running back, but just not a good quarterback. Quarterbacks are just the most valuable player. But this, we haven't really seen a season like Todd Gurley. He's been playing like a running back, but with insane receiving yards, almost like a wide receiver. I mean, Todd Gurley is great. I'm not taking any way from, anything away from him. I think he's the best player in the league. But I just, if you're considering most valuable, I'm going to give it to Carson Wentz. 
Well, and interesting, interesting talking there. But um, the Rams' def the Rams and Eagles' defenses are also some of the best in the league. The Rams' defense has been historically great with the massive free agent acquisitions of this last year of Ndamukong Su, Akib Talib, and Marcus Peters, plus Aaron Donald being his dominant self. This is known as the Rams' dream team in a way. Um, versus the Eagles' already elite defense with Ronald Darby leading that secondary. Do, do you think this game will be judged by the defense, and do you think that the, these defenses can shut down either Carson Wentz or Todd Gurley? I, oh, I really think this game will be go down to the defenses. The Rams have set are the only team ever to lead the game in um, um, the NFL in sacks, interceptions, and now um, – points allowed in a game. This team is beyond dominant on both sides of the ball. And I really see, even though the Eagles amazing offense this year, that's just um, really balanced. I just can't see them getting past this amazing um, Rams defense. I mean, obviously that is a possibility that it comes down to the defenses. But when I think about it, as we said, both these defenses are some of the best in the league. So if we're talking about the differences, is I think it's the quarterback and running back. The Rams definitely have the best running back in this game and Todd Gurley. And I, the, the Eagles have the best quarterback in this game in Carson Wentz. So it's really going to come down to Jared Goff versus Carson Wentz and Jay Ajayi versus Todd Gurley. If Jay Ajayi puts some monster numbers, I think the Eagles. If Jared Goff plays just as well as uh, Carson Wentz, I think the Rams could win this game. It's really going to depend on these small things. I really think I agree with Noah 100%. And I really think if the Rams can figure out a way to stop now and can stop Carson Wentz, I can see them pulling away with this win. But if Carson Wentz is able to destroy this Rams secondary, I really see the Eagles getting a pretty easy win. Some good hot takes there. Now we're going to go down the field where XXS Tentacion is singing the national anthem two months after coming back from Cuba. Jack Jassy. Sadie Bilvitz. Ari Moore. Jack Brooks. In three, two, one. One. Hey everybody, Jack Jassy, Ari Moore, Jack Brooks, I am Stanley Wobbins. Welcome to today's pregame show here on Christmas Day. A very Merry Christmas to you all. This is tonight's primetime game, the game we've all been waiting for all day. It's the Lakers against the Warriors. We'll be getting to game picks in a second, but for now, let's talk about the Warriors. Obviously, the Warriors are known as the unstoppable team. Now that they have Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, Curry, and Thompson all on the same team. But folks, DeMarcus Cousins is not coming back until, coming until January. Even though he was signed to that one-year $5 million deal, that will only be for a few months. So my question is, can the Warriors be vulnerable? And with JaVale McGee at center, can the Lakers exploit that hole in the front court? Jack Jassy, we'll start with you. i got to take my hat off for this. So LeBron James, he's coming. And I think the Warriors, they could be in trouble today. They don't have... They don't have DeMarcus Cousins. We don't know. I, it's in Oracle Arena. I don't know if the Lakers can keep up with the Warriors. I don't think they can. But, you know, you can't count out LeBron. Never count out LeBron. That's what I've learned by watching him for 10 years. That's right. All right, Boar. Well, what I'm going to have to do here, I'm going to have to count out LeBron. I'm sorry. The, the Warriors are too much of a powerhouse. It's too much for LeBron. It's going to be without a, Cousins. Yeah, even without Cousins. They, they could take out another All-Star, and the Warriors would still win. Take out Kevin Durant, still a blowout. The, the Warriors are going to win tonight, and it's going to be a blowout. They're going to shoot crazy from three. I'm saying maybe uh, 130, 99 Warriors. LeBron, LeBron, LeBron. That's all the way Akers are. The Warriors just swept Le LeBron and the Cavs, and that's when they had Kevin Love, Keenan Thompson, and J.R. Smith. Now, Cousins isn't on the Warriors. LeBron, Kobe retired, and Lonzo Ball, well, he is out of his rookie season, so he's not very good. All, the Warriors are going to absolutely dominate because all the Lakers have left is LeBron. Ron James. We've seen this happen before now three times in the finals. The Warriors are going to absolutely demolish the Lakers. Well, uh, first of all, it's uh, Tristan Thompson. Keenan Thompson is a guy for Saturday Night Live, first of all. Yep. Second of all, um, I think that, I mean, the Warriors are probably going to win here. We know that they're heavily favored against any team they face. But we have to consider where they are in the front court. The uh, Warriors have Draymond Green, which is a big, big presence. But if Kyle Kuzma can exploit whoever the Warriors have at center, then we could see, we could see a bit of a shootout in the inside game. But I don't think that's going to happen because they still have Draymond Green up, up, in, up inside. Um, second of all, um, I'd just like to talk about um, the Lakers' young core. Because, first of all, this Warriors team is not going to last forever. Kevin Durant's free agent after this year. Uh, uh, obviously, DeMarcus Cousins signed that one-year deal. Um, 
Draymond Green's not going to get any younger. A lot of guys, these guys have a, have a couple of good years left. I mean, but maybe they'll have a dynasty that goes 10 years, 10 years, 10 years, but like, I doubt that. No dynasty, no, no, no Seven dynasty Curry's has ever come close. Seven Curry is still young, yes, but not a lot of those guys are young, or not a lot of those guys are in their prime anymore. So we have to consider that with with, with Lakers, Lakers' young core, if the Warriors start to fall, can the Lakers win a couple of rings with LeBron? Ari, uh, I think I think they can. You know, they they do have a really good young core. And uh, when they get older, they, they might get a lot better as well. They might get some free agents, you know. But uh, we'll see. Right now, though, the Lakers have no chance at winning. Maybe may, not even next year. I don't think they have a, a chance at winning next year. Uh, but, but soon, though, in the near future, I do think that the Lakers will be a really good team. Okay. Uh, Jack? All right. Now, listen. Do I think the Lakers have a chance at winning the finals? No, because here's the thing. In order for the Lakers to win the finals, they need to make the finals. In order for them to make the finals, they need to win the conference championship. The Warriors aren't only in their conference. They're in the division. The Lakers will have a hard enough time winning the division, more or less beating them in the conference championship and moving on in the finals. There is no way that a young... NBA core and LeBron James can beat he, Kevin Durant, Draymond Green, Stephen Curry, Clay Thompson, and soon, well, when they make the playoffs, Cousins. There's no way that the Lakers can get past them. Well, I would like to say this before we move on to Jack. Um, the free agent class, I think we'll get to the second, 2019 free agent class is going to be loaded. So the Warriors are going to have two big free agents and Durant and Cousins on the free agent market. So if, if this happens and if um, other teams lure enough guys away and the Warriors don't have the pick of the litter as far as free agents go, then it's going to be really tough in 2019 to see all these new teams with all these new superstars. Although we thought that, la although I will say this, we thought that last year when Jimmy Butler joined the Timberwolves, when Chris Paul joined the Rockets, when, uh, when Paul George and Carmelo Anthony joined the Thunder, I mean, I think maybe, maybe it'll be that kind of situation, but I think it'll be much, much worse than that. Well, Jack Kevin, Dur well Kevin Durant is going to resign with the Warriors. Like, what is he? We don't know that for sure. We don't know that for sure. Is right. We'll see kind of this. Well, Jack we've seen. LeBron has been tremendous on the Lakers. But I feel like I think they need some more pieces to win, just like you – I, just like you guys have been saying, I think they need a few more pieces to win. I don't think they can win with just LeBron, that young Lakers core. I think they need another one. If it maybe it's Kawhi Leonard, maybe it's somebody else. We don't know yet, but I think they need an, another piece at least to get even close to being the Warriors. So I think I, I've gathered this from all of you guys. Your guys' picks are Warriors win easily. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think this the future looks really bleak. For the, uh, the future uh, does not look so bleak for the Lakers, but the thing is the Warriors are just too good. And right now, we need to uh, understand this. And this is just a message to all NBA fans. The Warriors are very, very good. The, better than any, any, any other NBA team. Maybe better than any two NBA teams combined. But their raid is going to be over very, very soon. And if we and if the Lakers keep it close tonight, then we could see how. Uh, and let's see, we'll see what how the Lakers do tonight. I will see how close they, how close they are to being good done. I'm Sammy Wovitz, Jack Jassy, Jack Brooks, Art Moore. Enjoy the game. Live from Coors Field, the Rockies and the Pirates are playing to start off. Uh, sorry, the middle of the series, second game. Pirates beat the Rockies 10-0 yesterday. Thoughts on what can happen for the second game? Maybe the Rockies can see if they can push it into winning the series? I think the Pirates are actually in really good shape today. You have Colin Morin, who is the league leader in Grand Slams. You have Chris Archer, who you just traded for from the Tampa Bay Rays. He's going to be a huge uh, asset. He's starting today, so I think that could be really good for them. And then they also have Corey Dickerson, who's recently off the DL, and he has one of the best averages in the National League. So I think... With the uh, cumulative amount of, then you add like Polanco, Marte, like McCutcheon. Harrison, oh, no. McCutcheon's not there anymore. Cervelli, um, like Chris Archer as a hitter, like everybody. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but it, like they're gonna, I think they're gonna be in really good shape to win today. And Herman Marquez is the starter for the Rockies, and Chris Archer and Corey Dickerson who did play for Tampa Bay uh, for a brief period, so do you think that that could be a good good connection? 
Um, personally, yes, I do believe so. But what I wanted to talk about was this game will be very important for the Rockies to win if they want any chance at going to the playoffs. They're two games back in the NL West behind Dim the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers currently. So if they want any shot, even at a wild card, they're going to need to start winning games. Right. Live from you from Coors Field, my name is Russell Tabor. Chris. Nixon. And Will Kirker. Hi, I'm Spencer Aaron McClellan. I'm Teo Schmidt. I'm Alex Baum. In three, two, one. Hi, I'm Teo Schmidt. We're here uh, ahead of the Ravens-Rams preseason game. It's going to be a big event. We've got a bunch of talking points here. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting game for, for preseason. It's going to, it, should, it should be one of the most anticipated preseason games we've had in years. So the first thing we're going to talk about here um, is RG3. So his he had a good performance at the Hall of Fame game, I would say. Uh, it's disappointing that he threw that interception in the first half. But then um, let's let's talk about him and, and mentoring Lamar Jackson and, and maybe even getting a starting quarterback role. There is no better mentor for Lamar Jackson other than RG3. This guy was an amazing rookie, was more or less kind of injury, not really injury prone, but was not healthy when he decided to play through injuries. And I definitely think coaching staff did influence that a lot and uh, you know him Lamar Jackson is not very injury prone people are like oh my gosh Lamar's gonna get injured this that blah 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 Lamar has only missed one game in his college career and then like he seriously the guys it was I can't even remember what it was for but he's not very injury prone and then on top of that RG3 will tell him dude don't go back from injury early and then the Ravens in general, Joe Flacco is going to be starting. He should be starting, well, no matter how old he is. The only way that Lamar Jackson is really getting his chance is if Joe Flacco just is terrible, like unbearably bad. They have Michael Crabtree. You could do so many things on this team. And what's even more interesting than this is the fact that Michael Crabtree and Aqib Tlaib are on these teams, both new to their respective teams. So now we'll get to see a rematch of that. So... I think it's interesting. A lot of there's a lot of people who are disappointed with Lamar Jackson's performance. I think he scrambled the first two snaps. He, he started the second half, so he scrambled the first two snaps, and uh, he didn't th he didn't actually make a pass until the sixth snap. So it was very it was very interesting. I think to see people's reactions to it, and they're 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 not very confident in Lamar Jackson's arm strength. Alex, what, what do you what do you think about that? Yeah, RG three reminds me of Lamar Jackson. He plays like Lamar Jackson. They scramble a lot. Well, I mean, I, if I can just jump in here. I, I'm a Redskins fan. I think at the time, RG3 had a lot more arm strength, and his, his passing ability was much better than Deep Lamar ball. right now. Yeah, that's right. Deep ball has more than Lamar Jackson. I'm not sure about the speed, though. Well, well, that's actually very interesting. So I, I'm glad you brought that up because RG3 was actually uh, training for the 2020 Olympics um, when he got that call from the Ravens. So he wasn't... Uh, you know, he hadn't played in the NFL for a year before that, but he had actually been training to play in the Olympics. He was a, I think he did hurdles at Baylor. He's very, very quick. So, um, we'll... we'll, we'll I'm going to say this. I think Lamar Jackson, for most of his career, has been a better quarterback than Robert Griffin III. You know, whether, you know, college success, this and that, I feel like Lamar Jackson... People just way under talent him. People say, oh, you should go to wide receiver. Those people are crazy, and those people should not be in the sports industry. I think Lamar Jackson is a quarterback. No matter how quick you can run, that is to your advantage. Robert Griffin III was more of a kind of run quarterback. I, I, Colin Kaepernick was a run quarterback. So... All right, so no, so Cole no, no. Kaepernick was a run so quarterback, the, and the that's Redskins, why he's no longer the RG, the RG3 so Redskins thrive on this. Can I say something, mate, before you just interrupt me? Colin Kaepernick was a running quarterback. If he was a pocket quarterback, he would have never had a job in the NFL. I, I, Whether he could throw the ball decently, but was he a quarterback that you would say arm strength level NFL? No, absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. I'm going to disagree with you here. RG3 and Colin Kaepernick, RG3 Russell Wilson. RG3 lost his job oh, to Blaine are you gonna, Gabbert. Are you going to interrupt me? So I, I think he did not lose. Blaine Gabbert's never been on the Redskins. But the, they, they both, th they, all three of those guys, I'm Wilson, Wilson Kaepernick, and RG3, they thrived on the triple option, which kind of died out. But it, it required arm strength and it required speed. And, and 
I didn't, I think that's something Lamar Jackson could do with the Ravens in the future. He's not ready for the starting job right now. Right. Colin Kaepernick we're, got we're benched for Blaine Gabbert. We're not we're talking about there. Kaepernick. All right, we're done. We're, done. we're not talking about it. Eli Gordon Schwartz. Kevin Whetstone. Leo Warnoff. Peyton Spinner. In three, two, one. How is everybody doing? I'm Leo Warnoff. Welcome to pregame of Giants Jaguars week one of the 2018 NFL season with this Jaguars defense and the Giants' new running back, Saquon Barkley. Will they be able to pull off the upset against this tough defense? I'm going to go with yes. I think Eli Manning has a very huge game here. I think he bounces back from just an absolutely terrible season, even getting benched under Ben McAdoo. But I think under Pat Shermer, I think this is going to be a very good team this year. And I think Saquon Barkley finds a way to score a lot of points. I think he has three touchdowns and 150 yards today. Wow, good prediction. Um, Eli, what do you have to say? I think it's going to be a pretty close game, but the Jaguars' defense is going to end up coming out victorious. Saquon Barkley is going to have a pretty good game, around 90 yards, maybe a touchdown and a few receptions. And um, Eli Manning's going to probably throw – an interception and a touchdown, and um, I think he could do good, but I mean, the Jaguars defense, really good last year. I think the Jaguars defense will beat the Giants. I'm also going to go with you here. I think it will be a relatively close game, maybe like a touchdown, maybe 10 points, but I just think the Giants might not have enough on offense, even with Saquon Barkley to beat this very talented Jaguars defense. Saquon Barkley will have, I, in my opinion, I think he will have a pretty good first game, maybe a touchdown, a rushing touchdown, maybe a receiving touchdown. But at the end of the day, I feel like the Jaguars are just too good for the Giants. I'm going to have to disagree with you guys. I think Saquon Barkley might have a chance to be the best NFL running back this year and for many more years to come. I think he's going for 150 yards and two touchdowns with the Giants winning by at least a touchdown, I, even, with the, even with the talent of Jalen Ramsey and the Jaguars defense. Well, when I look at the Giants team, I mean, obviously you have Eli Manning, you have Odell Beckham, and then you have Saquon Barkley on the offensive end. But when I look at it, the players I'm excited to watch today are um, Evan Ingram. I think he's going to have a breakout season. He's, I think this, he's going to be the best tight end in the league this year. Just an absolute monster. He was converted from a wide receiver to tight end last year because of Sterling Shepard for the Giants. But I think Evan Ingram has a breakout day, maybe 90 yards and a touchdown. But also when I look at the Giants team, I see, I see Sterling Shepard, who I think is going to be another great receiver behind Odo Beckham Jr. and Eli Manning and Evan Ingram. But I think also Sterling Shepard is going to have a breakout year. But something we could see, I think Evan Ingram, Eli Manning might go to him the most this game because we have, you have A.J. Boye and Jalen Ramsey covering the number one and two receivers on the Giants. So I think they're going to find Evan Ingram probably going to be covered by some safeties or some linebackers, which means like I think they're going to go for him a lot considering he's going to be wide open a lot. That's like what they did um, – Last year, week five versus the Broncos, that's what the Giants did, found Evan Ingram a lot. He had a huge game because um, the receivers, because the Broncos had to keep to leave and Chris Harris Jr. last year, so they had to go to Evan Ingram a lot, and he ended up like doing really well for them. I also agree with that. I do think that Evan Ingram will have a really good game week one against the Jaguars. Um, as you said, the top two receivers are going to be were um, covered by arguably Jacksonville's top two corners, A.J. Bouye and um, Jalen Ramsey. So I think matchup-wise, Evan Ingram is a favorable target. Yeah, with all this talk about the Jaguars' defense, let's just talk about Landon Collins, the leader of this Giants defense at safety. I think he'll have at least one interception on Blake Bortles. I just don't think that he has the talent to lead this Jaguars team to victory tonight. Yeah, I'm going to agree. Obviously, the Giants defense lost Jason Pierre-Paul, someone that's really struggled the past couple years, obviously with the stupid injuries, self-caused injuries. But, I mean, talking about the fireworks incident, I'm not going to bring it up again. But I'm gonna, if I'm going to, I have to rant about that. But with the Giants team, I really think it's a team that the offense is going to lead it. But for me, if this team wants to win the division and make the playoffs, they're going to have to have a great defense. All right, I guess that's going to wrap it up for pregame coverage of Giants-Jaguars week one. We're out.
Ben Afferbuck. James Myers. Seth Golovsky. In three, two, one. Welcome to Access Sportsnet Dodgers. I am your host, James Myers, and along with my two partners, and Ben Afferbuck and Seth Golovsky. And tonight, the Dodgers and the A's play, if you don't remember, rematch of that 1988 World Series. The great Vince Scully had the call. Mike Fires versus Clayton Kershaw tonight. What's your thoughts? Well, Mike Fires has no way the Dodgers in the past when he played for the Astros. <coughs> but Clayton Kershaw is such a dominant pitcher that I don't think – I think the Dodgers could, can win this game very easily. Your thoughts? Uh, I – I think the Dodgers will win, but I wouldn't sleep on this A's team. Chris Davis has been absolutely crushing the ball the last couple of games. They're just a very solid team. Jed Lowry hitting up over 300. I think they can sneak up on them. It's definitely not going to be an easy outing for Kershaw, and you're dealing with a guy in Friars who has owned the Dodgers in the past. So I will pick the Dodgers to win, but I don't think it will be an easy game in the least. This game could potentially matter for both teams since the Dodgers are in first place just by half a game behind the Arizona Diamondbacks. So if they lose this series, the Diamondbacks could potentially pull in front in first place. And the A's because the A's are five games behind the Houston Astros in the AL West. So this game is a crucial game for both teams. And don't forget that the... A's are also hunting for a wild card spot. They could possibly play the Mariners. Do you think the Yankees, though, do you think they will lose it enough that, that they would play Seattle instead of the New York? I don't, make it? I don't think that um, the New York Yankees can lose that wild card spot right now. The Yankees and the Red Sox are just too good right now for um, the Yankees to lose that wild card spot. Um, I think that the Yankees, you're, you know that they're not going to lose the wild card spot. You just you have to hope that they that you can uh, have them f drop to second place in the wild card standing because nobody wants to go into Yankee stadiums in the wild card. The Twins learned that last year, and I think the A's would be in for a rude awakening if they were if they did had to have to walk into Yankee Stadium and play that wild card game. With that Yankees wild card spot, I believe that the other wild card spot could will come from the American League West, either the um, – it could be the Astros, the Mariners, or the Athletics right now because they're so close right now. But um, I think it will be Yankees and then one of those three teams, depending on who wins that first place. All right. The Dodgers are in first place by half a game. If they lose, they have to hope for Arizona to also lose in order to stay in first place. Do you think the Dodgers could possibly though, make the World Series again this year? I believe they can if they can work that bullpen. I think they have they have a decent rotation, but I don't think anyone can back them up in the uh, playoffs in the bullpen. Yeah, the bullpen for the Dodgers is definitely their biggest question mark. You got great hitters through the lineup. You got Turner, Muncie, Machado, Dozier, two of those guys they just added. I fear for that bullpen though. You have Kenley Jansen, and that's it. And sometimes Jansen isn't even that reliable. So. If their bullpen can step it up together, they can go to the World Series. I don't think they will win the World Series. I think whoever meets them in the AL will beat them. Yeah. Yeah. So the Dodgers tonight, they play Oakland. And with this history, the great Vince Scully, the Kurt Gibson home run, how do you think that could really, those stuff in the past, could affect the rivalry in the I don't present? believe that any of that affects the rivalry right now, honestly. Like... Clint Kershaw is a dominant pitcher, but then Mike Fires also has a history for being very good against Los Angeles Dodgers. So uh, I think Dodgers win, but it'll be it'll be a tough. Win. Uh, yeah, that won't really make any impact considering half the guys playing today weren't born when that happened. So I don't think it'll make a huge impact. I feel like the A's fans will want their revenge on the Dodgers for what they did, but yeah, my prediction: I will go with the Dodgers to win four to three. All right, we're about to wrap it up, but I have a have a question for you guys. Will Mike Fires pitch a no, another no-hitter against the Dodgers? I don't believe so. Last year's Dodgers were uh, not as good as a hitting team as the Dodgers do right now with the, Brian, with the addition of Brian Dozier and Manny Machado. I don't believe that Mike Fires can pull it off two times. 
I'd love to see it happen because watching the Dodgers get no hit is very funny. Their fan base goes crazy on Twitter and Instagram. And it's just Jake Arrieta's already done it. Friars has already done it. They're, they've been getting no hit consistently. So if the bats don't wake up, it's a possibility, but I still don't think it'll happen. All right, we will see you at the post soon show. At, but for now, Joe Davis and Omar has, has a call. Hi, I'm Aaron Kinsley. This is Jack Dodson, and that's... Charlie Landsbaum, and today we are hosting your pregame show for the Stanley Cup Game 1, where the Golden Knights will play the Capitals. Who do you think is going to win, Jack? Personally, I think that the, the Golden Knights have been great all season, but the Capitals being in a different conference and having to play teams like the Penguins, I think the Capitals are going to pull through. Who do you think is going to win? I think the Golden Knights will go through. They had a phenom- they're having a phenomenal season this year. So I think they're going to win game one and see what's going to happen in the rest of them. I think, I don't know what's going to happen in game one, but I, I think the Capitals are just a better overall team. And in the series, I think they'll win. I think Alex Ovechkin will do great. Uh, I mean, but the Golden Knights, first year as a team, their first ever franchise year, and they're in the championship. What do you have to say about that? Um, I think that's remarkable because – you have, you have to be really skilled and have a great coach, but the rules make it so that when you're drafting players, you don't – the league doesn't want a team that's just starting to be horrible, and that's why the Golden Knights are. But they, they handled it really well, and they ended up being the second-best team or even the best if they win this uh, in the league. What do you think, Charlie? So I think that's phenomenal because, you know, um, it's the first season and they're ready in the finals, so um, I think they're going to win it all. Uh, I think, I think, I mean, just as a starting team, it's great, but also they have such a great overall team. Like, they don't have a lot of, they don't have a lot of, like, players that are bad. They don't have a lot of heavy hitters, but still a lot of, they have great depth. And that's what's been that's what's been carrying them. Now, a uh, quick topic before we uh, move on to the game here: Alex Ovechkin, uh, one of the hyped players for uh, the Capitals. How do you think he'll do in this series? I think he'll do great because he's he's a phenomenal player. But the Capitals have never pulled through this far with him, and he's been a great leader for the team for so long. And they just haven't been able to make it in the playoffs. And I think he wants to show people that he he can win. He's a great player. He's been hot in the playoffs. Charlie? I think Ovechkin is going to rack up a lot of points in the Stanley Cup, and he's going to do great. Okay, well, we'll see you at uh, the post game, and that will be it. On to the game. Jay Spall here with Adam Kozlowski and Ryan Vindiola here hosting their pregame show for the L.A. Dodgers and the Oakland A's game. So, let's start. Which pitcher do you think is going to be more dominant, Clayton Kershaw or, or Mike Fires? Well, I think that the A's um, with Mike Fires, I think Mike Fires is going to be so dominant. He has the lineup to back him up. Clayton Kershaw, he hasn't been as good lately. But it's going to be a pitcher's duel. I think Mike Fires is going to be better, though. Ryan? Um, I think um, it will be Clayton Kershaw um, coming out. He is more experienced. He has, a, I say, a better team than the A's. The A's, uh, they didn't play their best yesterday. And Clayton Kershaw, he can throw those nasty pitches. And he can get those strikeouts. But Fire, yes, he is good. But he, is he Kershaw? No. So they think guys for that. Now let's talk about who do you think is going to pull up the win from an overall team? I think the Athletics are getting the win today. Mike Fires, 7 and 6 record. Kershaw only 5 and 5. Fires has been with many teams. He's had as much experience. He just came over from the trade with the Tigers. The Athletics have the hitters to back them up. The Dodgers, they've been really good, but I just see athletics pulling ahead. Ryan, what do you think about this topic? Um, ooh, this one's a little tough. Coming, the A's are coming from a loss. They might be more powered up. Um, I thought I think it will be the Dodgers. I think they will win this series, win this game. 
Clayton Kershaw will pitch good, maybe a one or two earned runs, but he'll get like eight strikeouts as he regularly does. And the team, um, they they have not been cold that lately. Of course, against the Astros because they have very good starting pitchers, but the A's are not the Astros. They're not the world champions. I think the Dodgers will be winning this this game, but it will be a pretty close one. Yeah, I agree with both of your decisions. Now, for the last topic, let's talk about the Dodgers and A's tree line with all their very odd and amazing trades. Adam? I think the Athletics had a better trade deadline because, first of all, the Dodgers, they only got really one star player, and Machado, they didn't really need him. He's, it's kind of like the Yankee story where with starting pitcher, if one person's not doing well, oh, let's get Sonny Gray this year. Oh, let's get Jay Happ. So, um, the Dodgers are really just looking for a place filler, but the Athletics made a few moves to help out with um, starting pitcher from today's pitcher, Mike Fires, and also they just got a good closer from the Mets, Jerry's Familia. That's very true. Ryan, what do you think about this? Um, I think that the Dodgers did better, even though they didn't need Machado or need Brian Dozier, but it helped the team a lot. It added a lot, a lot of depth. Um, I think that they should have maybe got me like a, a reliever or two, but it wasn't it wasn't a bad um, trade deadline for them. Yeah. So I'm Jake Spall. This is Adam Kozlowski and Ryan Vindiola, and we're signing out. We'll see you at the post game. Welcome to Game Seven of the 2018 World Series. I'm Max Baker with my partner Alex Swift, and today. The Los Angeles Dodgers will be playing the Boston Red Sox at Fenway Park. This is a very interesting game because the Red Sox have just came off their 100 plus win season and the Dodgers are coming back for the World Series for their second time. What are your thoughts about this game, Alex? I think that Sale versus Kershaw will be a very good game and after it was 2-2, um, each team winning all of their home games in the first at the first um, set, and then ev everyone has won every single home game that has been played in this World Series. That is a, a shocking stat. Um, so it is tipping in the favor of the Red Sox, but it still would not surprise me if the Dodgers did win. I definitely agree with that. And it wouldn't surprise me if the Dodgers won because after last season, losing in Game 7, which was very tough at home, I think the Dodgers might be able to pull it out here tonight. What do you think about the pitchers' battle, Alex? I think that it's, it's going to be great. It's, they could both pitch all nine innings. It's, it's going to be where you might even have just like six hit games, eight hit, eight, just low amount. And it, I think that... The winner will win two to one. That that's a very score. Yeah, a definitely a low scoring game. I'm predicting that the score might be around three to two, maybe a little higher than two to one, but definitely still low scoring. And it's going to definitely be a pitcher's battle. Yes. So that does it tonight. I'm Max Baker with my partner Alex Swift. Thank you.